I'm Trish Simpson Davis. I'm Marion Reed. My name is Godfrey Collier. My name is Steve Baker. My name's Sally Miller. I'm Sue Bell. I'm Sarah Lewin. I'm the Information and Archives Manager in Hampshire County Council's Archives and Local Studies Service. I'm the Oral History Coordinator. And I'm the Secretary for the Bishop's Waltham Area Oral History Group. I'm a volunteer in this exhibition. I'm a trustee of Hampshire Gardens Trust and I run our research group. So we are responsible for, among other things, maintaining the Hampshire Registry of historic parks and gardens. And my role within Skate Southampton as technically the chairperson but our whole role as an organisation is basically to promote skateboarding and make exciting things happen. I live at Mitchell Devastation and have done for nearly 40 years and I thought it was time to celebrate Mitchell Devastation's 180th birthday. So the project involved archiving uh, a whole host of 35 millimetre negatives of skateboarding within the UK between the late 80s and the early 90s. Things like this can just get lost so easily, you know, and there's a whole generations of skateboarding and skateboarders now who might not necessarily be exposed to what skateboarding was, you know, back when it kind of originated during the initial boom in the UK. It's kind of a bit of a historian education aspect, but it's also a kind of really fun thing to do. Photography's always been such an integral part of skateboarding, so when I was kind of handed a whole bag of film negatives that had just been rolled up in their canisters after being developed, sat in this bag for near on 30 years, it was kind of, you know, what is, what is in here? Our project was to celebrate Mitchell Devastation's 180th anniversary. It was important because it is such a, an interesting station that has resulted in a settlement developing and it is quite an unusual settlement. This exhibition tells the story of the Mayflower in Southampton in 1620. Uh, the Mayflower is an iconic ship as far as some Americans are concerned, but it is also an important part of the history of the city. The Mayflower came to Southampton in 1620 for its supplies and to be joined by another ship before they set sail for America. And they were actually here for three weeks and during that time quite a lot of important things happened. We decided that we would um, commemorate the sailing of the Mayflower by having an exhibition in the city and the city council gave us permission to use the Westgate Tower. The research was important for a couple of reasons really. One was um, as a almost as a training exercise for my researchers to sit in archives and read 18th century documents and transcribe them. So it was a very good learning experience for them. It was important to update the record about Humphrey Repton's work in Hampshire, which really nobody had known much about. And also it was an opportunity, having done the research, to do some public Talks. We've forgotten that all around us there are people, our neighbours, our families, our friends, who can tell us stories about the past and we've got to hang on to those and capture them before it's too late. But it's also important that we get younger people to understand that they've got stories to tell. How old are you when the war started? How old was... Oh gosh. I think I was seven. One of the things we had to do, we had to wear a gas mask, which was a peculiar, ugly looking thing. You had to put it over your face, you had to breathe in, and then if you breathed out, the air would sort of escape along the side of this thing with a sort of bubbly noise. And every day we had to do practice at having a lesson with our gas masks on. I heard about the Hampshire Archive Trust when we were trying to raise funds to create many of the exhibition um, displays. Uh, and uh, I knew uh, one, of the, uh, one of the members of the Archive Trust and uh, she suggested I made an application for a grant. We've always had a, a relationship with them as, as the Gardens Trust. I have been aware of it for many years and taken advantage of um, activities and events that have been sponsored by the Hampshire Archive Trust. We are very keen to continue working with the Trust because it helps us, it helps support archives, it helps support our public service, it also helps community groups with their archives and generally helps support and promote 
the value and use of archives in Hampshire and beyond. We heard about the Hampshire Archive Trust after a conversation we had with A Space Arts, where I approached them and said we had an awful lot of kind of film and photography um, material from the late 80s and early 90s. We wanted to archive it, and um, they just kind of recommended we get in touch with, with you. We needed a grant because we really needed a television. Um, we had a video of part of the story of the Mayflower, which we wanted to have in the exhibition. And we also needed some leaflets, which we wanted to give visitors so they were better informed as they went round. We used the grant. Um, it, was, it was a contribution towards the cost of publishing the book. In 2017, it was the tricentenary of the death of Humphrey Repton, who was a uh, landscape gardener who's successor to Lancelot Capability Brown. And he, ha he had two projects, two gardens that he built in Hampshire. So this was part of a research project to find out more about the work he had done in Hampshire. And the site that we chose to research is, was Herriard Park. And as it happens, there's a huge archive, a huge family archive in Hampshire Record Office um, about his work there. Um, everything from long lists of, of orders for the garden to the nurserymen. And I and some colleagues spent most of the summer of 2017 transcribing that archive. We needed a grant to archive a whole bunch of 35mm negatives that we got given by a local skateboarder, Don Bryder, um, and we just basically wanted to turn those into a digital format so they were protected for the future and then look to produce some form of magazines or zines um, in the future and then, you know, look to exhibit some of these photos. The grant paid for the, uh, the hire of the hall, the speaker and the printing of this magnificent little booklet, Parsons and Prawns. We've recently we've received a number of grants mainly to support the cataloguing work that we do here. Um, well, we've got um, collections which we don't have time to list as part of the day-to-day -day business. So it's great to have additional support, financial support, to catalogue those collections and make them available. Um, the Back to Nature one, I mean, we, we felt with all the sort of interest in the climate change and the natural environment, it was really good to be able to showcase some of those collections and to try and encourage people to come into the record office to carry out research on, on those archives. We needed decent recorders, um, that we needed microphones, and then of course to run it properly we needed um, a laptop, and also things like paying for software, um, and most importantly paying for um, actually archiving what we recorded. We got a grant of £500 which basically covered the cost of employing a professional uh, photographer to scan and digitise uh, all of the negatives. Applying for the grant itself. It seemed very easy. Um, we contacted um, Hampshire Archives Trust um, to inquire about uh, grants, and I know they have different le levels of, of grants for projects, um, and filled in the application form. And they came back and said, I think we had asked for £4,000 towards the publication cost, but they gave us 3000 which was absolutely terrific, yeah. We've also had grants from the Trust for um, purchasing archives that have come up for sale at auction to help support that process. And with those, you need to act really quickly. And I have to say, we got a very quick, very helpful response from Hampshire Archives Trust, which was really helpful to us. It was all agreed within uh, something like two or three weeks. I had a conversation with your secretary, um, and then I prepared up a very simple document that said what our aims and purpose were, and the amount we needed and what we wanted it for. I believe we downloaded, completed an application form online, submitted that, then had uh, a meeting with the trustees online. Just to elaborate more on what our plans and ambitions were, we then received the money, got stuck into what we were doing, and then we've had a few follow-ups um, just to see you know, how things have gone and how things are going. I think we'll definitely be applying for, for more. I've been very impressed. We've made sure that visitors know about the Hampshire Archive Trust because without the trust, we would not have been able to have achieved everything we wanted. The Hampshire Archives Trust is an incredible organisation. It has been so helpful to us. 
archiving things to share information and keep it safe you know for generations to come is so important because it doesn't take long before things get lost if you've got proof you know and have archives to share and if that can be translated into formats that people can you know in the modern age or time relate to then yeah it's super important